Bro, it's never been so easy to summon a rainbow dragon. It's nuts. What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko. Guys, you see the smile on my face? I'm super excited because we're going to be showing off Crystal Beast, but not just any Crystal Beast deck profile. This is going to be a combo variant of Crystal Beast. This deck is insane. It's just a bunch of two-card combos that make insane five, six disruption boards. Yeah, I'm being dead serious when I say that. And in tomorrow's video, I'm going to be showing you guys those combos. So stay tuned. And the way to stay tuned is to one, like this video if you guys enjoy, but also make sure you subscribe because if you guys are subscribed, you guys are going to get to see all the other Crystal Beast and other content that's here on the channel. We upload five days a week. We do deck profiles, combo videos, product openings, duels, all that good stuff right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to see all that good stuff. Now, I'm really excited. I don't want to take up too much time. So with that, let's get into the deck profile. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't been this excited to do a deck profile in some time. So to start off this deck profile, of course, we're playing three of the main man himself, Crystal Beast, Sapphire, Pegasus, your best normal summon of the deck, the card that you want to get to as fast as possible. And then we're playing one of each of the other names. This one, of course, signed by Neshi. And fun fact, Ruby Carbuncle is actually my favorite of the Crystal Beast. But yes, we have the one Ruby, the one Amber, the one Topaz, the one Cobalt, the one Amethyst Cat, the one Emerald Tortoise, and we're playing all the names. So why are we playing all the names? Because you guys are watching a combo build of the Crystal Beast deck profile. If you guys are playing Conclave Control, you definitely don't play of all the names, but however, you have to play all the names because you do want to turbo out Rainbow Dragon as fast as possible in this deck. And to do that, we're also playing an eighth Crystal Beast, which is two Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon, or Zenith as people know it. Now this card provided an insane boost for the deck. Not only is it an eighth name for you if you need it to be, not only is it a really good summon in the battle phase for you but it also just gets you to your rainbow dragon as fast as possible which makes other cards in this deck very very live and of course we're also going to be playing two rainbow dragon so why we're playing two rainbow dragon is because essentially zenith has the effect or crystal beast rainbow dragon if you guys don't know the ocg name is zenith so if i say zenith i mean this card right here but its effect mandatory has to add a rainbow dragon from your deck to your hand and so for that reason you have to play two because if you draw one in your opening hand then you can't actually even activate the crystal beast rainbow dragon effect so for that reason you want to be playing two also the really cool thing about rainbow dragon is in your first turn combo you typically go through all the names so on your follow-up turn you can actually just drop a rainbow dragon whenever you want even if you draw into the second one it doesn't really matter because you'll have all your names in rotation so that's it for the crystal beast monsters you guys can see here we're playing one of each of the names just the important ones zenith of course being one of the better ones and sapphire pegasus being the three of because this is the one you actually want to draw and this is the one you want to normal summon then moving on to the crystal beast spells and traps this is where the deck gets kind of broken i won't lie we're playing three of the brand new rainbow bridge of the heart this card's insanely powerful it's literally a true draco spell card and it's so good so pretty much it does multiple things for you the first thing is during your main phase it gives you an extra normal summon so you can normal summon twice on your main phase just with this card being available to you the other effect is you can destroy a crystal beast monster or card you control so it doesn't have to be a monster but in a lot of cases you want it to be a monster so that it can be now crystallized and then you can add any crystal spell or trap from your deck to your hand what this is really good to combo off with is your crystal beacon which you will see because there's a simple combo which is very simple if you normal summon your sapphire pegasus you can crystallize a second one and then you can activate bridge of the heart to pop the sapphire pegasus which is going to get crystallized you're going to add crystal beacon to your hand activate your crystal beacon and then what that's going to allow you to do is summon your ruby carbuncle from deck which now gives you access to special summon two sapphire pegasus back to your side of the field and then now you get the sapphire pegasus effect again none of these effects are once per turn which is insanely powerful the rainbow bridge effects are but the crystal beast monster effects are not so that's why this card is insane and then the third effect this doesn't happen too often but if a crystal beast card is placed to your spell and trap card zone this is from the field or or hand or deck which is really cool because you can technically activate it if you normal summon sapphire pegasus and then crystallize another one you can activate this effect where you essentially return a card your opponent controls and this card back to your hand which is extremely powerful because now it's really good disruption going second right so i know i kind of went in depth with this card but this is one of the best cards in the deck speaking of really broken cards in this deck we're playing three awakening of the crystal ultimate this card essentially gets you to your rainbow bridge whenever you needed to the reason for that is because zenith is going to give you access to your rainbow dragon and this effect requires you to have an ultimate crystal card in hand but you're always going to have rainbow Rainbow dragon because of zenith right so this card is really good for you the other effect is that you can just special summon a crystal beast monster from your hand deck or graveyard which is really really powerful it also special summons from your crystallization zone your spell and trap card zone so that's why this card is really good because worst case scenario it's just an extender for the deck which is really good then we're playing the not once per turn rota three rainbow bridge this card is insanely powerful you add a crystal beast spell or trap card from your deck at any point not once per turn really nuts we're playing one crystal bond now this one i know i'm gonna get questions on but we're only playing the one because you're only ever gonna resolve it once so the thing with crystal
crystal bond all of these cards are going to get you to your crystal bond in one way shape or form and so the reason you only need the one is because once you activate the one in your first turn combo if your combo all resolves then essentially what ends up happening is you're going to have an unbreakable board anyways so for that reason your crystal bond is really important just to play one of because this card is really good don't get me wrong it's not like a bad card but it's just one of those cards like once you activate it the first time that's all you're going to need it's going to be very difficult to resolve it a second time or even need it to resolve a second time right you would rather play other cards that can combat the meta or just further your game state speaking of a card that furthers your game state we're playing one crystal beacon now this is a card that i was talking about with rainbow bridge because essentially what happens is you get access always to two of your crystallized monsters with just rainbow bridge and sapphire pegasus which is really powerful and this pretty much special summons a ruby carbuncle from your deck it's just part of the combo which is pretty mandatory it just makes it very very powerful and i've really been liking these ratios it's the most consistent ratios that you can play and then for the last card that's not a crystal beast spell or trap it's also not a crystal beast monster but we're also playing it in this deck and you guys are going to understand why because in tomorrow's combo video it'll make a lot more sense but we're playing one gigantis gigantis is really important for the combo it gets you an extra body on board it helps you go into your rank fours it helps you link climb if you need it to be this card is insanely powerful so that's why we're playing the one gigantis it's just like an honorary crystal beast in this deck all right it's a really powerful combo piece and it just pretty much just puts the whole deck together so that's it for the crystal beast stuff gigantis is the honorary crystal beast like i said the rest of the stuff you guys are going to see in the deck now are just to combat the meta and keep up with the meta so moving on to the hand traps we are maxing out on some of the best hand traps in today's format we're playing three ash blossom joy spring rejoice guys this is a common in the structure deck you guys if you picked up the structure decks you can play this of course with no problems we're also playing three dd crow a card that's a little bit expensive now but dd crow is very important in today's format especially with the most recent ban list tier laments is going to be one of the best decks if not the best deck hands down so dd crow is just really good into that but it's also really good into a lot of other matchups as well but against the tier limit matchup specifically you need to be playing three crow and then three imperm imperm is also really good for breaking boards going second so that's the really cool thing i like about the hand trap lineup is the fact that yes you're a combo deck you do want to go first you want to set up your combo but if you don't you're playing nine hand traps here to combat the meta which is really really nice and really really powerful for you and another hand trap the last one you're playing and i'm going to explain why we're just playing one of we're playing the one nibiru so i'm going to explain this in just a little bit but just keep this in mind we're playing the one nibiru it's really good of course if you draw it and you're going second this card is really good but you actually are playing it to protect yourself and i'm going to explain why in just a little bit so for the spells unfortunately first of all i don't have so pardon you guys i only have the one pot of prosperity but you want to be playing the three specifically because the extra deck is very toolbox outside of a few pieces that you need to combo but the rest of it is very toolbox and you want to keep the consistency as high as possible with this deck so for that reason you do want to play pot of prosperity it's not an otk deck it is a go first combo deck of course it can otk you have access to some of the most powerful monsters in the extra deck with this deck however going first of course you're always going to want a prosperity because if you can fix your hands and you can sculpt your hands you're always going to be able to combo which is very very powerful then we're playing one called by the grave and the reason why we're playing nibiru is because we're playing three cross out designator now why are we playing three cross out designator you might ask well this card is actually very important because we are playing a combo deck we do want to make sure our combo is always going to resolve however there's one card specifically or there's two cards but there's one card specifically that destroys the combo because you don't really put up negates before you can stop it and that is the nibiru over here all right so you're very scared of nibiru you have no way to stop your opponent from nibiruing you and the thing is with nibiru is it's very relevant in today's format it's not like one of those cards that's not relevant right now at the moment nibiru is a very relevant hand trap and so for that reason you need to be playing cross out for the nibiru but funny enough another card cross out is really good against is dd crow now we're playing dd crow of course to combat the tier limit matchup a lot of decks are playing dd crow to combat the tier limit matchup as well but why are we playing the cross out for the dd crow why does that make sense well because your combo relies on having all the crystal beast names in the graveyard and if your opponent funny enough just dd crows one of the names that's not sapphire pegasus of course because we're playing three sapphire but if they dd crow your ruby or your amber or your topaz if they dd crow any single one of them your entire combo falls apart so that's why we're maxing out on the defensive cards over here because we just need to guarantee our combo goes through and if our combo goes through then you know we're we're winning the game 100 but we need to be able to guarantee that so for that reason we're maxing out on the defensive cards so moving on to the extra deck we are playing the one brand new ultimate crystal rainbow dragon overdrive this card is insanely powerful it becomes 11,000 attack for you which is nuts and the other effect is really really powerful the disruption effect where you can shuffle this card and as many cards in the field back into the deck and then you can special summon any number of your banished crystal beast monsters this also summons your zenith back if you need to summon zenith back but it's insanely powerful because it's going to get all your monsters back in rotation it's going to send all your cards your opponent controls back into their deck which most of the time does not trigger a lot of effects 
So this card is insanely powerful as a go first boss monster, but it's also really good going second, just help you OTK. Then we're playing the one rainbow over dragon. It helps you get into your ultimate crystal rainbow dragon, which is insanely powerful. So you need to be playing these two. Then for the combo cards, we are playing the one gallon granite, which this helps you search the gigantes. It's part of your combo, which is really important. One Dugaris. This card is also part of your combo. Helps you get Ruby Carbuncle back onto your side of the field to abuse its effect over and over again. We're playing the one abyss dweller. Of course, this card is very important for our combo. One Baguska as well as as one tornado dragon dweller right now is probably the most important rank four monster to go into because of the tier limit matchup but if you have a hand with like 2dd crow the really cool thing about this deck i'll actually just explain it real quick you guys are going to see the combos tomorrow but a lot of the combos are two card combos so for that reason if you have like a dd crow or two hand traps in your hand sometimes you won't have to go into the dweller but if you're not going into dweller baguska or tornado dragon are also really powerful mystic mine is still a thing so if you can just you know sit on the tornado dragon on top of your combo then you're in a really good position right so you're going to be really wanting to play these ones these are the most important AC's monsters in the deck that you guys can play and these two are important for the combo but these three are just the ones you choose to end on depending on what the rest of your hand looks like then for your link monsters we are going to be playing a few of the combo pieces so one of our combo pieces is cross sheep this card's insanely powerful because what it lets you do is when you make your over dragon with this on the field you're going to get the special summon ruby carbuncle again from your graveyard it also just gives you access to sapphire pegasus or any other level fours in your graveyard if you need to go into a rank four so cross sheep is a mandatory one of card same thing with chiribini chiribini you go into to most of the time get the last crystal beast name in the graveyard whether you're sending amethyst cat or you're sending emerald tortoise this card is really impo important for part of your combo it just helps you get the last name into your graveyard and then we're playing the one ip mascarena phoenix and unicorn these are just utility pieces cards that you can go into mid combo so it's really important to be playing those ones and then lastly for our boss monsters that are not these two we're playing the apollo the axis code and the underworld goddess i think these are the most important ones that you guys can play a lot of the time your end boards are going to look like ip mask arena plus uh over dragon plus a dweller so if you end on an ip plus like dweller for example if you use a dweller effect you can go ip with dweller into your unicorn for another form of disruption or you can go cross sheet plus ip into an apollo kind of depends on what your boards kind of look like so these are really important i think this is a perfect extra deck so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy now this is the combo variant of crystal beast i understand some of you guys may question why i'm playing all the defensive cards it's gonna make sense when you see tomorrow's combo video why i'm playing and why it's necessary to play all those cards however if you guys want a more mid-range version of the deck you guys can play concave control which obviously you guys can check out neshi's channel if you guys want to see that but i'll be doing a concave control deck profile as well in the coming days so make sure you guys stay tuned and to stay tuned what do you guys got to do what do you guys got to do you guys got to subscribe to the channel and make sure to like this video because if you like this video then more people will see this video and then more people are going to subscribe and then the spanko squad is going to get bigger and then that's how we all go together so make sure you guys subscribe make sure you guys like the video make sure you comment down below because the algorithm works that way and thank you guys all for watching i really appreciate every single one of you i wouldn't be here without you guys so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that spanko signing out peace